What was your culture shock? And I literally like screamed in the toilet. A Japanese man fell asleep on me yesterday. Ooh. This guy just said something nice to me. I was like, yeah, I just wanted to like give this to you, but she looked like I was about to like mug her or something. <laughs> hey guys and girls, it's your flashy fashion reporter, Kathy Cat. And today we're gonna go hit the streets of Tokyo and ask the first time as the people who are here for the very first time, what surprised and shocked them about Japanese culture. So let's go and ask foreigners in Japan. All right, what brings you to Japan? So I've just graduated my double bachelor's degree. Congratulations! Thank you, and I've come here to visit Japan for the first time for a month. Why Japan? I've always wanted to go and I'm visiting one of my friends out here for the first time. So I said, why not Japan? And, and you researched online about like what videos did you see? TikTok. No, 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 that's not what I wanted no, to hear. I'm talking about <laughs> Kathy Cat. I know about Kathy Cat. I saw her and I was like, I have to speak to Kathy. I have to make sure that I say hi. I'm so happy to meet you. Like the, 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 the rival is on TikTok. I'm like, no, censor this, censor this. <laughs> no, it was a real pleasure meeting you. I'm glad our eyes met. I was looking at her going like, nice style. She's looking at me, he's like, I this could be about my glasses. <laughs> But yeah, it's been really cool to walk around. This is my first time in Shinjuku today. And I'm just going to walk around and see what I like and then hopefully buy some cool stuff. Yeah. It is her very first time in Japan. So first time in Japan, how is it? It's everything that I wanted to do and more. And I'm scared when I have to go home, I don't want to go home. So we'll see. I'll definitely be back sometime, hopefully next summer. But I don't know, we'll just have to see how much money I make. Okay, okay, okay. Question, mm -hmm. what was your culture shock then? If this is your first time, this is day number? Um, it's day number six. Day number six. Perfect. Where, what were your culture shocks for the first time coming to Japan? I feel like with a lot of like Instagram and things like that, they'll make you feel like, oh, you can't do this. You can't dress this way. You have to dress like to a certain dress code. But I feel like everybody's so free to dress how they want. And as long as you don't like have like your boobs out or anything like that or anything too, too crazy, then you're totally fine. Mm -hmm. And everyone's super nice. Like my Japanese isn't 10 out of 10, but I'm practicing so everybody's really really nice so yeah. that and the toilets are really crazy as well <laughs> the toilets are super crazy here what, what happened to you i didn't know that they had like a blow drying setting and i pressed it and i literally like screamed in the toilet and somebody was like that's just this guy and i was like yeah hecky, hecky, i'm fine <laughs> nothing's wrong i was like i just didn't know what it was because i can't read japanese properly yet but i'm definitely have to understand it a little bit better next time. <laughs> <laughs> the blow light, drop, blow drying setting. Oh my God, it's absolutely insane. We don't have anything like that back home. So I'm like, yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> definitely a culture shock. Anything on the same scale of funny that you've experienced so far? Um, a Japanese man fell asleep on me yesterday. Ooh. So I was going back home from, I think it was the Izakaya and he was like slowly falling asleep and I was like, I, where was that on the train yeah it was on the train i think i can't remember it was the jb line or something like that but he was really he was really really tired and i didn't want to like touch him or anything so i was like it's fine and then i got up and i was like i need to i need to go but <laughs> i felt really bad i felt really really bad you're very polite <laughs> i just didn't want to wake him up and he was like weird about it so i was like let me just leave it and i'm sure it'll be fine in a workout First time having a Japanese man fall asleep on you. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely interesting. <laughs> Anything else funny that has happened to you so far? I just think like with the hotels, the doors lock so quickly. And when I was like moving all my stuff in, I've been like locked out of my hotel like three times already. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm a little bit clumsy, but it's totally fine. I 100% love it here. And I just can't wait to come back again, to be honest with you. Mm, good. All right. So... If you had only seven days in Japan, what would you cram into those first seven days? Try like day one, two, three, let's go. Day one. But you're probably gonna be tired. So onsen, relax after you've just had that long flight. Um, day two. That's by the way, a really good piece of advice. In my opinion, it helps a bit with the jet lag to go to an onsen, get a massage, spa, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think maybe day two, would be try and learn your area that you're living in or like where your hotel is. 
find the good restaurant and then kind of make that your home spot if you don't find anything else. Mm -hmm. Day three, maybe going to like Disneyland or something like that because it's a lot easier to go to Disneyland during the week than the weekend. Mm -hmm. And it's super, super busy on the weekend. So I've learned that lesson already. Um, then maybe like relax and go to like somewhere a little bit more um, like quieter, not necessarily Shinjuku, maybe like outside of Tokyo. I mean, I don't know exactly where, but just somewhere a little bit outside, like the countryside would be nice. Five, six would be um, going around the bigger city parts, like getting all your shopping, going to Don Quixote. <laughs> oh my God, buying a second suitcase or third suitcase in Don Quixote, buying everything, weighing everything. And then maybe like six going on to seven, getting, getting everything that you didn't get to go to in the beginning, mm -hmm. catching up everything, and then just trying to not cry at the airport when you're leaving. Aww point yeah super sad it's super super sad but i love it so far and i really want to like make sure that i try and squeeze in everything because it's super super hard to like make sure that you get everything major warning you have to buy book everything in advance here like a month in advance i didn't know if there's something's like super popular i didn't know you had to book things in advance for example um if you want to go to um, studio ghibli's like the theme park here mm -hmm. i didn't know that you had to book it so early and now i can't go oh. i really wanted to go i'm a, I'm a massive ghibli fan oh. now i'm really sad that i can't go so there'll be next time well, you mean the Ghibli Museum in Tokyo, right? But there's also Ghibli Park. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. The actual, like, theme park. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, like, book that kind of in advance. So It's popular because it's quite recent. Mm -mm -mm. But I think maybe with just some practice and just making sure that you do everything in advance as much as you can, but don't proof everything, it will be good. Right. So we have now your seven days. What is your must do during this Japan trip that year? Because it's your first time. What's your like, I can't wait to... I'm going to dress up in a yukata with my friend. I meet her family for the first time. But I was kind of scared because I'm like, I have tattoos and piercings, but they were super, super nice to me. So I can't wait to like finally meet them and like be really nice and have a tea ceremony with her family. So I'm super excited. For that. Do you speak any Japanese? Um, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Japanese. It's like, squishy, 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 squishy amount of Japanese. It's like I've more practiced with my friend. I kind of struggle with reading it. The symbols kind of confuse me a little bit, but it's a little bit, not anything to be, oh my god. Your English is, I mean, your Japanese is amazing. Oh my God. Like, it's just, I know how to order. I know how to ask for the train station. Where is the bathroom? How much is this? And how do I get to X, Y, and Z? And oh my God, your outfit looks amazing. That's pretty much it. But yeah, I think it's okay. I've been surviving so far by myself. No problem. So yeah, it's going pretty well. <laughs> I, love, I like the last one that's like, I love your outfit. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, some people like, well, not some people, a lot of Japanese women dress super well here. Mm. So I will be like, oh my God, kakui. Uh, and then they'll be like, oh my God, thank you so much. This, this guy just said something nice to me. I'm like, yeah, of course. Everybody's like super nice here. So want to at least spread the, spread the magic a little bit as well. Be a part of that. But yeah. Exactly. Spread the magic. Compliment yeah. Japanese people. Yeah. I love it. It's super nice. And I feel like here, it's a little bit like difficult to like find things like for like, plus sizes over here but one of my friends recommended me to go to like some shops down here so i'm gonna have a look and hopefully i find some nice stuff as well is there any situation where you were like i wish i could say this there was a lady that like i think it was on my second day she thought i was like running after her but she literally like dropped something <laughs> and because i was like my legs were still hurting after sitting on the plane for so long I was like walking, but I was like speed walking behind her and it was kind of late at night. And then I was like, go, go man. And then she was like, eh, and she turned around and she had headphones in. So I was literally like this behind her and she had dropped her scarf that she has. It was like a little pashmina scarf. And then she looked so terrified by the time that I got to her. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know how to express like how sorry I was. And she looked mortified by the time that I gave it to her. She was like, oh my god thank you so much and i was like oh no it's fine i just wanted to like 
give this to you, but she looked like I was about to like mug her or something. And I was like, I just wanted to give you like your scar. But apart from that, it's all been okay. I just wanted to like translate like how like sorry I was for making her feel like I was gonna do something. But apart from that, totally fine. Oh, don't worry. I think you did everything right trying to give her her, her <laughs> scarf back. I hope so. I hope she thinks that it was okay. Like I wasn't trying to do anything shady. But yeah, she will have noticed by the time you handed over the yeah, scarf yeah, that yeah. she was wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, apart from that, pretty much that's, I think that's pretty much it, I would say. Yeah. Do you think you can survive in Japan without Japanese? Uh, I think... In Tokyo, yes, but the further out you go, maybe in like some of the bigger cities, like maybe Osaka or Kyoto, maybe. But if you go to like more of the countryside, I don't really feel like you're gonna do that well, because as much as like Japanese people sometimes like to practice or like to have like little one-off situations where they'll try and speak to you, I think it's kind of hard to like decide whether or not they're gonna have that one minute where they're like yeah i'm gonna gonna go for it i'm gonna speak to them or they're kind of like shy sometimes like i found like i don't mind trying to practice but i don't know if they're gonna really do well in like the countryside and things like that especially like as soon as like as soon as i come towards a japanese person they're like oh my god ego immediately i have to speak english but now over here like in tokyo i think it's fine but i went to like a shrine like yesterday And they were like, oh my God, I don't know what the hell this, this woman's about to say to me. So I was like, okay, I just wanted to like pay for something and ask for like directions. And they were like, oh yeah, that's totally, that's totally fine. But apart from that, I don't, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how well that would, that would go. Yeah. The more you go into the countryside, people that might be but like, oh, I don't know, I, I can't speak English. What should I do? Kind of thing. Yeah. It gets more like a panic type of thing. And it's like, not even, not all foreigners are like, the most dangerous oh my god we're convicts we're gonna murder you if you don't speak Japanese or English or <laughs> we just want to know where we're going we just want to figure out like how to get somewhere or do something half of the time so I think that when you kind of like get the gist of like basic Japanese then that should be fine but I think basic is a hundred percent you should know of any country that you go traveling to anyway but Japan a hundred percent you need to learn at least a little bit of something Tokyo has changed now massively because we've had such a big influx in tourists we actually have adapted the city pretty well to that a lot of the signs are in English now and there's a lot more support for English speakers so if you come cities like Tokyo they got you covered however if you go to the Japanese countryside that will probably not be the case so generally no matter if you're coming to Tokyo the countryside learn at least the basics yes thank you please and such but then if you want to learn a little bit more Japanese we got you covered because there are some Japanese classes we've done here on this channel I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you soon on Ash Japanese